for this next video we're going to continue with data representation but we're going to move on to part two which is all about text sound and images um, in particular this is broken into three specific parts character sets um, working with ASCII code and Unicode um, the representation of sound and the representation of bitmap images all these different file formats text sound and images um, need to be converted into a binary format in order for a computer to understand and be able to work with it and this um, this video hopefully will explain all of that to you so we start off with character sets ASCII code and Unicode but um, the question is what are character sets well these are made up of all the letters the numbers and various symbols um, that can be encoded inside a computer as patterns of binary digits but what does that mean well when you press a key, uh, key on your keyboard a number is generated that represents a symbol for that particular key this is called a character code a complete collection of characters is what's known as a character set now well what do I mean by that um, for example if um, we press the A the capital A on on your keyboard um, and the number 65 is generated now this of course is the denary number and that is converted into binary which would be 0 1 1 lot of 64 0 0 0 0 0 and then 1 being the 1 so 65 the ASCII code system, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, was set up um, a long time ago, back in 1963. Um, it was used for use in the communication systems and in computer systems. As you can see here, I've, I've highlighted the, the um, character capital A from the keyboard, um, which has a decimal value of 65 and an hexadecimal value of 41. And of course, that's been converted into binary as you can see there. Um, the standard ASCII code character set consists of seven bits, um, seven bit codes. Um, so any a number from 0 to 127 in denary or 0 to 7f in hexadecimal. So basically it allows for 128 different characters to be represented, um, characters that you can find on your standard keyboard. Also together with that um, 32 control codes and um, going moving from um, 0 to 31 and as you can see there um, the backspace um, is represented by the um, number 8 and the escape key on the keyboard is represented by the number 27 or an hexadecimal um, 1b now obviously um, 128 characters doesn't give us a lot of scope for storing numbers um, symbols um, letters etc so in the 1980s a version of ASCII came out called extended ASCII um, which allowed for not seven bits but now eight bit um, character sets and uh, doubling the number from 128 to 256 different characters this enabled um, the storage of storage of such characters such as the copyright sign um, letters with um, certain accent accents over them and various uh, other European languages such as the Greek alphabet including alpha beta um, your pi and um, and omega but even with that um, it wasn't really enough so a new system was developed um, a system called Unicode which went from 8 to 16 to 32 bit um, character sets um, so you can, with 32 bits, you can inst uh, you can store rather rather a lot of information. In fact, with 32 bits, as you can see here, we can store over two billion different characters um, with 32 bits. So with this now, all the emojis that you're obviously familiar with um, can be stored as well. And you can see there, I've used the website Unicode-table.com, um, a great website for finding out all about. Um, Unicode and the various other character sets that are available. Moving on, the second part, representation of sound. Now remember, as we said at the very beginning, um, computers can only work in binary. All data must be converted into binary in order for a computer to process it. Sound is of no exception. To do this, sound is captured usually by a microphone and then converted um, 
into a digital signal. When we speak, when we sing or hear noises, our ears sense vibrations and interpret them as sound. These are what we know as sound waves. Each sound wave has a frequency, um, as a wavelength and an amplitude. The amplitude specifies the loudness of the sound. Sound waves vary continuously. This means that sound is analog. Computers cannot work with analog data, so sound waves need to be sampled in order to be stored in a computer. Sampling means measuring the amplitude of a sound wave. This is done using an analog to digital converter. As you can see the thing flashing here, something called an ADC, analog to digital converter. Okay, so to convert the analog data to digital, the sound waves are sampled at regular time intervals. The amplitude of the sound cannot be measured precisely, so approximate values um, are stored. But what does that mean? Well, if we use this graph as an example, the graph shows a sound wave being sampled. The x-axis, the thing along the bottom, shows the time intervals when the sound was sampled, um, in this case 1 to 20 to 21 and the y-axis shows the amplitude of the, of the sample sound up to 0 to 10. Um, at time interval 1, you can see here, the approximate amplitude is 10. At time interval 2, the approximate amplitude is 4, and so on, all 20 time intervals. Because the amplitude range shown is 0 to 10, then 4-bit binary can be used to represent each amplitude value. For example, um, 9 be represented as converted to binary um, with the value 1001. So increasing the number of possible values used to represent sound amplitude also increases the accuracy of the sample sound. For example, using a range of 0 to 127 gives a much more accurate representation um, of the sound sample. The number of bits per sample is known as a sample resolution, also known as the bit depth. So, in the example on the previous um, slide, the sampling resolution is 4 bits. Sampling rate is the number of sound samples taken per second. This, and you may be familiar with this term, this is measured in hertz, where 1 hertz means 1 sample per second. So how is sampling used to record a, um, a sound clip? Well, the amplitude of the sound wave is first determined at set time intervals, the sampling rate. This gives an approximate representation of the sound wave, and each sample of the sound wave is then encoded as a series of binary digits. Um, of course, using an, a higher sampling rate or larger resolution will result in a more faithful, faithful rep representation of the original sound source. However, the higher the sampling rate and or sampling resolution, the greater the file size. So the benefit, there are obviously benefits and drawbacks of using a larger sampling resolution when recording sound. The benefits obviously um, um, much better sound quality, larger dynamic range and um, less sound distortion. But of course it's going to produce um, larger file sizes. These large files um, are going to take longer to transmit or download um, over the internet. Um, and it potentially would require greater processing power. Now there is a standard um, used generally at MP3s and CDs and they are sampled um, using 16-bit um, sampling resolutions and a 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate. Um, that is 44,100 samples every second. This being standard gives a very high quality sound reproduction. And finally, how do we represent um, bitmap images um, on the computer? Um, well, bitmap images are made up of pixels, a term you may be familiar with. Um, pixels is short for picture elements. An image, stop something stored on your computer, is made up of a two-dimensional matrix of pixels. And pixels can take um, different shapes, such as side by side in this case, and the circles um, joined together as so. So there are pixels in all images. There are pixels on your iPhone, um, on your TV screen, or on your computer screen. The more pixels in an image, the closer you get to the original image. Um, each pixel, each little tiny square, can be represented as a binary number. 
and so a bitmap image is stored in a computer as a series of binary numbers so that in the example below a black and white image only requires one bit per pixel to store its information this means that each pixel can be one of two colors corresponding to either a one or a zero so this little black and white face which we've got on here um, an 8 by 8, 8 pixel grid black and white image uses 64 bits to store the bitmap only zeros and ones now if we want to increase the colors um, I'm showing an example here I've increased it from a 1 bit two colors to a 2 bit image um, if each pixel is represented by 2 bits then each pixel can be one of four colors so two to the two equals four corresponding to the value zero 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 one one zero or one one okay obviously this doubles every time so if each pixel is represented by three bits then each pixel can be one of eight colors two to the three equals eight different colors and as you can see there they would be the corresponding numbers the number of bits used to represent each color is called the color depth. An 8-bit color depth means that each pixel can be one of 256 different colors. Modern computers, your MacBooks or PC laptops, modern computers have a 24-bit color depth, which means over 60 million different colors can be represent represented. Um, with X pixels, 2 to the X colors, um, can be represented as a generalization increasing the color depth also increases the size of the file when storing an image basically like with sound the better the quality the, the, the bigger the file you're going to need to store um, image resolution refers to the number of pixels that make up an image for example an image could contain 4096 by 3072 pixels so we basically multiply those two together sort of the grid matrix and we would in this case end up with 12 over 12 million um, different pics 12 million pixels with each one being um, potentially a different color three um, sorry five different pictures or five five images all of the same car wheel um, image a has the highest resolution the most number of pixels um, an image E is a uh, lower quality, um, far fewer pixels. Image E has become pixelated or, or fuzzy. Um, this is the result of changing the number of pixels per centimeter used to store the image. That is, it's reducing um, the picture resolution. So there are drawbacks. The main drawback of using high resolution images, um, like with sound, is it increases the file size. As the number of pixels used to represent the image is increased, the size of the file will also increase. This impacts on how many images can be stored on, for example, a hard drive on your computer. It also impacts on the time to download an image from the internet or the time to transfer the image from one device to another. A certain amount of reduction in resolution of an image is possible before the loss of the quality can or will become noticeable. Now that is it for this next part. We will be moving on into, in the next video into more detail about file compressions and how we can look at lossy and lost, lossless compression to, com to compress these files before we send them on um, to other computers. But for now, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. And um, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.